Hello and welcome to Crazy Hank TV, the Big Brother edition. And I'm joined by Big Brother expert, JP from New Jersey. How's it going, JP? I'll take credit. I'll be like a novice expert. I still got Wikipedia in front of me here. Well, you're better than me because I, I when I first started talking about doing this, I said, uh, I, I, I remember I was a huge Survivor fan. And then Big Brother, I think, came out a year later or something like that. And I said, okay, I'll give it a try. And I watched like the first two or three episodes. I go, I just can't get into it. I just got, couldn't can do it. But over time, because my mom's a huge big, so when I'm out there, I'm usually out there during when it's on. She, I usually watch a few episodes here or there. I don't know what's going on. But uh, I decided to commit to the, the, the full summer and I'm going to watch it. I'm going to do the best I can, you know, the strategy and all that different stuff. And I'll take your... I'll, I'll get your cue, but basically on how the stuff works and stuff. But uh, um, anyway, so you you've been watching Big Brother from day one. Yeah, no, I'm a uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Simon Cowell, Howie Mandel. I love all the yaks. The music's great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I actually i I started Big Brother. I've been watching for about ten years. I want to say I started. I think it was season ten or eleven. And, you know, just compared to where the show is now, it still seemed at that point it was like a very, very basic version of Big Brother. Not a lot of twists. And the game has just improved so much. And I, I'll tell you, every season I like it more and more. Well, like I said, I, I watched the first two episodes. And one thing I did notice is that I think you to be on this show, you have to be energetic. You have to be kind of uh, almost like an actor because a lot of the – a lot of the uh, confessionals are taken after the challenge or after something like that. And the way they describe it, they're like, oh my God, they're describing it like it was happening at the time. I don't know if I'd be good at that. Yeah, I was hanging there and I got, they threw some slime on me and yeah, whatever, you know. So I don't know, and, and I, did, I did find it fascinating that everybody that got that, because you get a key with your name on it, right? And that's how you know you're on Big Brother, but they're always shocked, but there's cameras there. So I, I don't know why they were shocked. So you don't think there were just random cameras at the beach? I'm just gonna say no that. because I, I, <laughs> I remember I was I they filmed a limit date at um at the rink when I the rink I used to work at and they had this it, they would have three people one person would go on three dates with three different people and eventually they'd just eliminate the date. Well, the, the what we did what we we watched the beginning and the, the opening where they they get to meet all they all meet each other. They filmed it like four or five times. No, you got to do this. 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 So I'm like going, okay, so reality TV is not always reality TV. But again, that, that goes to where th th these people are very, hey, look at what I got, you know. You know, I, it's, they're all, I mean, it's something with the personalities. I mean, they're obviously all picked for a reason. I think um, this season, I want to say they were probably all picked just because they're from New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does seem like a lot of people from New Jersey. So, uh, but uh, you, what we can talk about the people that got picked. For, I, I'm just going on the list. You got Holly. She was the, she's the from Wyoming or Idaho, but she lives in in California now. She's from right. LA. She moved to LA. Yep. LA. Yeah. So she's she seems like she'd be a good one. She's she's got the looks, and she seems like she has a good personality, and she seems to be fitting in with everybody, right? Yeah, she's, um, and you get a lot of that. I, I think every season it's it's a lot of lookers. I'm actually trying to think of a season where somebody made it that far and they were just like a plain Jane or a plain Joe on the show. Yeah, I'm thinking it, it, if, if you, if, good luck, I, maybe I should apply. If you, you know, I mean, if you want to spend just a week in the big brother <laughs> Maybe they give the ball headed guy the uh, anyway. Uh, then we have David, who unfortunately uh, is out, but we don't know if he's coming back because they kind of left it like he is going to come back, right? That's that's something of a twist that they'll throw in at some point where the house guests don't know it. But um, David and probably similar to what they did on Survivor, David and a few of the uh, house guests will get a chance to come back into the game at some point. Okay. And then you have Nicole, who's uh, a special needs teacher, and, and she seems uh, she seems to be in, in, in love with uh, – not in love, but she's she, – I think everyone likes Jack. And I'm not talking about me, but uh, Jack. You know you know who Jack is. Of course. Yeah. And then uh, Tom, 
Yeah, Aquaman. You know, I, when I first saw the the thing, I go, no, there's no way. He, it's, is it a celebrity big brother? Because I really didn't pay that much. To, I just said, okay, I'm going to go in there and kind of my, – my approach is always go in there and kind of be surprised by things. But when I saw the – I go, that looks like J- it was Jason Momoa, right? Of course. And I go, God, that looks just like him. And I go, oh, that can't be him. Why would he do – Celebrity Big Brother, he's a big star now. He wouldn't, there's no reason for him to do it. Uh, but he, got, he does look just like him. Uh, then we got Tommy, the dancer from, uh, from Broadway. Uh, he, he's very energetic. He's, um, I love, I actually wrote it down here. I love, this house is gorgeous. <laughs> gorgeous it's gorgeous. Look at what we got. And we have Catherine. I can't. I can't remember where Kath is. Catherine from New Jersey, probably, since I can't remember where she's from. Catherine is from Texas. Texas. From Miss, yeah, she was former Miss Texas. Or something. Right. Yeah. She she doesn't take selfies, so she has a guy following her around with yes. a camera. Yeah. yeah. I do the same thing because I'm terrible at the selfies, so I hired someone just to take pictures of me randomly walking around. I walk. I walk around with somebody who provides my theme music. Yeah. <laughs> and you have Kimi, who is is is. Uh, She's she's a mean person who decided she wasn't going to be mean, but that only lasted a couple weeks. Yes. So I'm, I'm thinking she's going to have trouble in the house. And you already see what kind of trouble that got her into. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm not, uh, bonding. Yeah, and then you have Cliff, the old guy, the the uh, token old guy, right? He's the right. he's the guy that probably goes out first, and and but he's he's got a uh, hog loving or what? What's he do? Hog. Uh, Anyway, <laughs> he's got a thing. he's got a thing for hogs and taking balls to the chin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's never <laughs> taken so many balls to the chin. <laughs> and then we have is it Ovi? I think it's yeah, Ovi or Ovi. Uh, yeah, from the University of Tennessee, who he was the student body president. Yes, from Tennessee, and uh, so he's got so he's got you know he's got the personality probably to go far. I would think it's happened before. You know, there was one season where the strongest, most handsomest person on the show didn't win. They gave it to the geekiest kid. And I'll tell you, that was probably one of the most exciting seasons I watched. Yeah, because you, you, you kind of want to see the underdog win. The guy, you, you know, it, most of those aren't pretty, right? We're not, we're not these, you know, uh, you know, chiseled or, you know, models or something like that. So we want to see, we want to see, we want to see someone like us win. Exactly. I'd love to see Cliff win. I don't see it happening because like I said, He's kind of a lone wolf out. I mean, he's going to have to survive the first week. But and then you got Nick, who's a child psychologist. And he, he seems pretty cool. I mean, uh, I like him. And then, yeah, he's he's, fr- he's actually another one from New Jersey. He's from yeah. South Jersey. <laughs> yeah, you, you, well, you can tell. And then you have, you have Jack, who's from Tampa Bay, and I think he works out and he has beautiful hair. And he, like I said, he, we already said he looks like Jason Momoa and all that stuff. So, how far do you think he goes? I can't stop staring at his picture. <laughs> well, he um, seems, he seems he seems like he has a great personality. He's not he's just not a pretty boy. He's his I'm going to say he probably makes it far enough where they've gotten rid of the people that they know just aren't going to matter in the game. Right. And now they're trying to decide decide strategically who's going to get him further into the game. Okay. And then you have Jackson and uh they're calling him Mickey. Is, what do they call him? Mickey, his last name. Mickey. Yeah, okay. yeah there it is right there. So, because uh, there's already a Jack. So, getting the two, you know, too confused. Because my name's Jack, obviously, but my dad just called me Jackson. So, I can see where the confusion would get. Um, in fact, I, I never had any, I never was never confused when someone would say Jackson. But it is what it is. But he, he, well, we'll talk about his strategy later on. But he's, yep. he's already told us that he is one of those beautiful people who's, he, He's a, he's a nice guy, but he, he he was telling us over and over again how he's the athletic type. He's the he's got a target. He's he's pretty. He's he, he, I, I, he must have mentioned it like a hundred times about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you have Jessica, who's a plus size model. Um, what do you think of her game's going to be? I'm you know I'll tell you I'm kind of rooting for her. I want to see again the average person. I want to see yeah. something like her. I love her personality absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, she does have a great personality. Yeah, she's very, very bubbly, very you know, fun to watch. Yeah. Um, we'll see what happens. And then you have Christy Murphy, who knows Tommy. 
Interesting twist. She dated Tommy's sister. I guess that's the one she talked about. So she dated. She's got a relationship for seven years. It didn't end too well. And she runs in there, and there's Tommy. Yep. And yeah, I'm very, like, I, I, I said, oh, that's got to hurt. Yeah, and here's the thing with that twist, though, is, okay, great. They know each other. I don't almost – I can't see how it's going to impact the game. I think she's got to watch her back because I think Tommy's going to – Tommy will cut her throat. Eventually it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I think that um, – I just – if I was her, I'd get rid of Tommy as fast as I could. Okay. That, that's, just, that's just me if I had the power. Uh, next is Sam Smith, the truck driver who talks like Charlie Day. <laughs> I, I, I the whole time I'm going. Whose voice does he have? Because he's very hyper. He's very. He's very. It's like he's on. He's on. I don't know how far he trucks. I don't know how far he travels from from place to place. But he, he sounded like he was on a lot of coffee and helium. Yeah, every every season, you always have one person who just likes to shout in the diary room. Yeah, is that what they call it, the diary room? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I, I just I thought it was confessional room. And then you have Annalise, who was a college soccer player. Who looks like a model? She does. Yes. Not, not that you can't be a soccer player and look like a model. I'm just, I'm just saying. But she, and she did pretty well on that one challenge too. Oh yeah, absolutely. So yeah. She, she could probably go far. And to finish it up, we have Isabel, whose mother doesn't really didn't know she couldn't talk to her for 99 days, and wants her to be a doctor, and doesn't know she has a a wild side to her. She's they, they think she's conservative. But uh, she's pretty in good position because everybody wants to be in an alliance with her. Yeah, she's, um, I want to say I can actually see her type of personality going far in this game. You know, she's, um, everyone seems to, just like you said, everyone wants to seem to latch on to her. Right. It's almost like she's going to be able to control the game, but not really be the front runner. Well, like I said, she's smart. Yep. She's, she's got a great personality. She's, she's, Pretty much got it all, and, and like I said, she's she's ha not having to do any work. From what I've seen, she's not having to do any work. People just go, "I want to, I I want to be, you know, I, I want to work with you." And it, that, that to me is the best thing in the world when people are like, you know, you go to a Survivor and people go, "Let's let's be in, in you know." Of course, Survivor they lie all the time. I'm sure they do this in Big Brother also, where they say, "I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you," and then they t turn against you. I mean, you have to at some point start cutting people off. But I would think from the start. If people want to be in your, you know, your alliance, so that's the best thing to be in. She gives me that vibe where she's going to be everybody's friend in the house. Right. But just like she said in the diary room, you know, she'll either stab them, kill them, cut their throat, whatever word she picked in that one interview. Yeah, well, she said, oh, no, I, maybe that doesn't sound good. Oh, maybe that doesn't <laughs> sound good. But then she kept get, it just kept getting uglier and uglier and uglier. So we had we had we had the uh, we meet the people we do the thing they say there's going to be a uh, something that's never happened before and we find out there's going to be a camp director. Yes. Do they always call it a camp or is it just just a different thing for each time? Is it just every a, yeah every season has a different theme. So this year, it, last year it was technology. This year it's camp. Um, they've never obviously they've never done the camp director twist, but. Um, Obviously, that's the role you don't want to have. You know, once you find out what the the consequences are, right. that's not a role you want from the beginning. I mean, I get, I get, like, I get Cliff trying to go after it because he'd been safe for a week, and he's, you know, he's saying, you know, well, I'm the old guy. The old guy's always the first guy. And you even said they pick the easy targets first, right, and then start coming back and, and going after the contenders. But you know, I can see Cliff going after it. But I'm thinking the whole time, I go, I wouldn't want it. And this is before I even found out about the stuff because I don't want to have that target on my back because I knew if you're get, they're giving you that kind of power, and they said you're going to have, a, you know, you know, power. There has to be something in there that you have to earn that power. And to me, I think you know, you you set four people that you know that we're going to get thrown out. That to me is tough. Because yeah, you basically you're going to have three people coming back that are going to be semi mad at you, right? With the possibility of a fourth person, with you know David possibly coming back, who of course is going to be pointing the finger at the guy who put him that put him in that spot. Yeah, because even when Jackson went to David, and said, oh, "I want you know I'm going to pick you, but you're going to be like the pawn. You're you're physical. I, you can come back in." I was thinking what he should have done is because I I didn't know what kind of challenge it was going to be, and almost it wasn't really a physical challenge. It was more 
mental because Cliff was actually smart and went to the side and felt, you know, the the uh, arrows pointing to the uh, the direction where to go. But I would have if, if you're going to do that. And I thought, well, maybe you take three of your the biggest, strongest people in your alliance and put them with someone you think is the weakest person. But again, you're you're still putting someone up that's going to get eliminated. And if they get eliminated. See, I mean, that's the thing also is he he did put up. He basically put up three people that probably aren't going to last that long in the game anyway. And I don't think those people are going to have much power in the game to impact, you know, Jack's, uh, Mickey's game. So you think he's all right? You think, you think I, he's... Yeah, I think he's okay. I mean, Christy, Christy is a part of his alliance. Yeah. So now when you're talking about who won the, the HOH competition, the head of household... You know, he's more or less safe at this point. Okay, so he he's cool as long as Christy doesn't doesn't uh, well, he can't be voted out, right? He that's he, true. Yeah, yeah. He, he can't he, be he's, out. he's got he's got immunity or whatever he's whatever they call it. Um, but she could she could turn on on because Tommy's not in her alliance. Tommy's not in her alliance. I mean, she could turn on him at this point. You know, we obviously we don't know what they're, you know, she obviously had a bad breakup with his sister or a member of his right. family was. Yeah. So we don't know what their connection really is other than the fact that they know each other. You know, I kind of like the fact that they kept that a secret and pulled each other aside and said, you know, we have to work together because that, that actually could work to their advantage. Right. It could. Yeah. I mean, it's probably too soon to, to cut Tommy off now anyway. Because he doesn't seem to be leaning one way or the other. He just seems to be going with the flow. Yeah, I I mean, if we're going to jump into the nominations for next week, you know, I think the smart move for Christy is to just put up the people who aren't really a threat in the game. Right. Because what I find is that the, the people who aren't a threat in the game tend to grow on the people who progress through the game and that leads to an underdog possibly winning this game down yeah. the road. So I think, I mean, I think the safe move for Christy is to not really rock the boat. Don't put somebody up who's got ties with anybody in the game. Right. You just put your Cliff up. Put your <laughs> your Jessica up. Yeah. Um, you know, put your uh, your Kemi up even. Yeah, because she's uh, she made a mistake by not. That's the reason. Uh, Jackson put her in there because he didn't. She didn't come talk to him. Exactly. And her exactly. and her attitude, her attitude was, "I'm not gonna come begging," but I think you have to. You know? Oh, that! Oh my God, absolutely. You just, at least come up and talk to him. Say, "Hey, what are you? What are, what are your thoughts? What are you thinking?" I mean, you don't have to beg, but you just uh, you can't sit back and, and go, "Okay, I'm fine." Because I mean, obviously, a lot of these most of these people are on this show because they love the show and they want to win. Yeah. To me, that just is terrible strategy. Yeah, it's, you know, it's almost like you have to, one, you have to form your alliance, but two, you have to really maintain very good, solid friendships with the people right. in the game. Yeah. Uh, that way you can use that to your advantage when somebody not in your alliance gets puts up, gets uh, HOH. Because I was, I, when I found out it was 99 days, I said, because Survivor, you have to have good social skills. And it's hard because you're, you're around those people, and you're not eating right, you're not sleeping right. But you're stuck with these people for 99 days. I mean, Survivor, I think, is 39 days. So you're talking 60 days longer. That's hard to get along with people. And, and it's, it's hard for people to fake it. I mean, if, if you don't like somebody and you're stuck with them day in and day in and day out, I mean, we've all been there where he's like, okay, I don't like this person, but I, ha I have to, you know, we you work with them or you do something with them. I'm going to make it work. I'm not going to let them know they don't like, you know, you know, you fake it. But I, I don't know how you can fake that for 99 days where you just go, okay, I can't take you anymore. It's it's definitely led to a lot of good drama on this show. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's actually one of the advantages to this show where they are being filmed 24-7. So, yeah, there's only so much that we can watch every week on TV. Right. But there are those live feeds that are running. There are the... Uh, the groups online that'll post clips of things that we're not going to see on TV. I mean, there are people who have mental breakdowns on this show. <laughs> well, I, I, can see, I can see it because, you know, you're away from your family and, but you're eating well. 
you know, and it, it you have you have a normal bathroom, you have showered. I mean, I don't know if they just have one bathroom. There's one bathroom. There's one bathroom. There are two showers. Eventually, uh, and you see a little bit of this, but eventually, um, people are. I'm trying to remember what it's called, but there are people who will lose warm shower privilege. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, there are people who are going to be put into a special room where they lose comfort. Oh, okay. So, so, so that helps uh, drive yeah. me crazy. Oh, well, okay. I, I was thinking, I go, okay, what, what, we got 16 people. Is that what it is? 16 people to start. Six, 16 people in one bat, one toilet. Is it it's just one toilet? With a camera in it. With a camera. That's nice. I'm thinking, okay, I've been in houses where there's only one bathroom and you got like five, seven or eight people in there. You're like, going, oh man, I got to go. So, uh, you know, I guess it's uh, the camera in the bathroom. That's nice. That's I, was nice. In, I was in Jay and Colleen's house with 30 people. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they have, they have a couple bathrooms, right? They like, One bathroom is uh, only one bathroom for the general public, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but there's only one squatty potty. And that's one, one squatty potty in the main bathroom. So that, that's okay. I did like Obi. Uh, I hope I'm saying this right, his name right, the guy from University of Tennessee. I did like the fact that he said he goes, his strategy was to throw the challenge, the H-O-H, -O when they were sitting on those tree trunks, yeah. being sprayed with slime and all that different stuff, to throw it because he didn't want to put him, he didn't want to set himself up as a target right away. I mean, I don't know, what do you think about that? But I've always, I've always felt that way, like in Survivor, uh, like the reward challenges towards the end, you don't win those you throw those because you don't want people to th think that you're the the main guy. Not, not that he would have won it, but he, I don't, what do you think of the strategy? You're a big brother. That's, that's a great strategy. You never want to be that first person in the house to get blood on their hands, basically. Right. So, so yeah, you did the right thing. Yeah. He's smart. So I, I, I like that. I mean, like I said, I, it's hard to pick cause I don't really know the game. So it's hard for me to pick. Like I said, I, I keep looking, I'm looking at cliff right now thinking, okay, the dude is gone. But if he survives the first week, if he can make it through the first week, can he go further in the game in your experience? Can, or is he just a target for the next week? He's probably, I, I mean, yeah, he, if, if you're just basing it on the fact that they always seem to just vote out the old person early on, yeah, he's probably a continuing target. Now what will happen is he's been nominated for, let's say he's nominated for, for uh, eviction. At some point in the week, they're going to have what's called the power of veto competition, where the head of household and the two people who are nominated for eviction, plus three other randomly drawn members of the household are going to compete in a competition. And whoever wins that competition gets what's called the power of veto, where they can veto one of the nominations or choose not to and leave everything the same. Okay. And if the nomination gets vetoed, then the head of household immediately has to put somebody else up. So if someone, so if I win, so if say I was there and I won the uh, veto power, I yep. could I could say, okay, we're not voting out Cliff this week. You can say I want to take Cliff off the chopping block. Off the chopping block. And then the head of household has to put somebody else up. Now, if someone would do that. Say if Cliff was in my alliance, I'd probably want to do that. But then, of course, <laughs> if I do that. Right, and Cliff is 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 on the is is obviously been put there because he's not part of the main alliance. I'm probably letting people know, all right. I was part of that Cliff's alliance. I'm part. Of, I'm I'm one of the weaker targets, right? I'm one of the weaker players. That's that's true. That can play out like that. Absolutely. So you have so yeah. Okay, I want to save Cliff, but then again, we only have three people in my alliance. You know, I wasn't nominated. Screw Cliff, he's done. I, I don't want to. I, it's not worth it for me. I, I guess I see the strategy. You have to worry about saving yourself. So it's like, yeah, I'd like to have Cliff with me, but the other group has seven people and six people in our alliance. I go. He was nominated for a reason. I, I gotta let him. I gotta let him go. I almost think also that some of the best players in this game are the people who have multiple alliances formed. Yeah. Well, that's uh, Isabel, right? Isabella. Yep. Isabella. Yep. She seems to have several of them. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm I'm getting into this game just because the way you're talking about it and do the difference because I like the best thing I like about like Survivor and Amazing Race is, is the different strategy, and there seems like there's a lot of strategy involved in this game. One of the things I also like about the game is because it's not pre-recorded like Survivor, 
uh, there's going to be no winner's edit. I mean, oh, some, okay, some yeah. of really strong. I mean, tomorrow could, uh, you know, be voted out. It's just the game really, really changes quickly. And like you said, someone could have a bad day and, and cause a scene in the, uh, in the house and people go, I, I don't want to be around this for another 90 days. So they, so I'm sure that's happened in the past where someone just goes, okay, I can't take this person. I got to get rid of, we got to get rid of. I have seen uh, people quit. I have seen people leave for injury. Uh, Russell Hance's brother was on the show and he actually became physical with somebody. So he was pulled out. I think I remember hearing about that. Yeah. yeah. Or his yeah. nephew, I think it was, um, you know, 99 days is a long time and you're in one house basically. I can't believe people would quit. I mean, I, 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 I you know, I, I, I have the same issue when, when people quit on like Survivor and other shows. Like you've, you, you've been chosen. You've been giving a, a something, yeah. something hundreds of thousands of people would love to do, and you quit. I, I, I have no respect for people like that. If you get hurt, that's one thing, but to just quit, I, I don't know. I couldn't handle that. I, I totally agree. I totally. Yeah. Agree. So anyway, is there anything else we should talk about the the first two episodes or? Um. Who's um? Do you have any favorites right now? I guess. Well, you know, like I said, I, I like uh, I like Obi. I like him. Uh, I like Tommy, but I think he's a little too hyper. Yeah. I think I think he's gonna. I like Holly. I think Holly's good. Uh, Nicole, if she can make it the first couple weeks, I think she'll be all right. And I like Jack. I mean, I I, I don't know how I he just I think he's just somebody that everybody's gonna gravitate to because he just he's that guy. And he seems like he's a nice guy. He didn't go on about himself over and over again. Like I said, Jackson, I like Jackson. He's a good, good Southern boy. He, he, he's got manners and stuff like that, but I, I couldn't take him talking about how good looking he was. <laughs> I mean, it just, it just seemed like, Oh, come on. You know, but anyway, his mother's not there to pour his truck. About it. <laughs> yeah. And Sam Smith, like I said, Sam, the truck driver, you want to see him win because you know, he's, He's there more for the money, not the, you know, some of these people, I'm sure they're on the show to advance their career as an actor or, you know, something like that, which is, I'm not, I'm not criticizing it, but he's on there to, to win the $500,000. I think the better his life and better his family's life. So you like Sam go, but he's, he's a little, like you said, when he, he was introducing himself, I think he said, um, you bang the gear, whatever he said, it just kind of, people kind of look like Yeah, he was doing it. He was doing a trucker's term. But you gotta, you gotta, you gotta know the room, and not everybody knows those terms. So, yeah, he's not, he's not very popular with the squirrel audience. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I guess that's too. Uh, uh, this is that common for to be taken away in a bag. Um, the nominees for when they were because uh, yeah, be they'll they'll do something different. I mean that that fits the theme. You know, one of the. Um, one of the, the things that they did last year was an early challenge and the, uh, the girl who lost it for one week, she was replaced by a robot. Replaced by a robot. <laughs> yeah. so they, had a ro they had basically a robot walking around the house. It was her voice, her controlling the robot from somewhere behind the scenes. Oh, really? But they would show clips, you know, you'd see the robot outside sitting by the pool with a bikini on. <laughs> <laughs> It was really cool, actually. So, so they make so they have some fun with it too. Oh, they definitely have a lot of fun with this. Now, was the squirrel actually dragging the people, carrying the people out, or was it just because uh, I, I forget who it was? He banged their head up against the counter, and I think it was Kim, Kim, Kimmy. Kimmy, yeah. yeah. So was she really in the bag, and he's smacking her up against the uh, cabinets? Let's leave the mystery there, Jack. For the okay, day. all right. Because I I was like going, you know, get a concussion the first day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said I just was like, okay, so there's this giant squirrel coming in, and he's going to take the people out, the four people. I think one of the highlights to look forward to, and I won't spoil it, is eventually we're going to see the Zingbot. Zingbot. Yes, it's probably one of the best parts of the show. All right, so I I, I don't want to know. I I, I want to be surprised when the yep. when the Zingbot comes in, but. Uh, well, how many? How much clothes do they have? Because they've already been slimed twice, they've been covered with slime. Uh, the, the other ones were going through; they were slimed and then had feathers. Some have been slimed three times. So, how, how, how many clothes, how, chains of outfits, do they have for ninety-nine days? 
Um, I mean, I guess enough to get you through the summer. You know, I never thought of counting. It's, you know, not like the Amazing Race where you're confined, but um, right. You know, one of the things that they do actually is they show them coming into the house with those little bags. Right. And they show them when they get evicted from the house, they bring their little bag with them. But I'm sure they they have uh, several outfits. You know, you're going to see throughout the course of the show, eventually, you know, people are going to be wearing hats. They're going to be wearing, you know, different things that just make their personality, basically. Okay. Because I'm watching this going, because I remember the bags. The bags are just like a little gym bag that you go, you bring your tennis shoes, your your clothes that you wear, you're going to work out in, you know, maybe a towel. But I go, these these guys have been slime like I mean, do they have a washer and dryer at the place? Yeah, they do. Yeah, oh, so, so they can so they can wash their clothes. Okay. Yeah, it's outside. You, you got a um, you saw the backyard all done up. Right. But once they clear it out, there's um, there's actually a swimming pool. They have workout equipment. They've got a washer and dryer. Okay. So they have all they have all the amenities. And they're 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 cool. Yeah, the, the house is out there. I mean, there are um, there have been moments where um, something is spoiled for the people inside the house because there are people standing on the other side of the fence yelling what's going on how who america is liking or something like oh, that oh really yeah oh yeah so they don't have they don't have a barrier to keep the so it's it's actually in, what a neighborhood in los angeles it's someplace in los angeles there that is an actual house someplace that the studio is connected to oh okay but um, the outside portion of the house once they open up the roof you know, they do get sunlight. They do have, you know, they get weather basically. Oh, okay. Because I, 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 oh, I've seen scenes where they're at the pool and they're, and, and it did look like they were outside. Yep. Um, but I didn't realize there were people that could, you could get that close where you could shout, "Hey, you know." It's happened. Tommy, you know, she's she's gonna cut your throat. Something. Like that. <laughs> yep. No, it's happened. Okay. You think that the the studio would keep the people away? Yeah, I, I don't know what they're doing to uh, stop it, but um, I mean, you can you could Google Maps the house and find it. So well, I would be out in California a couple of weeks. Maybe I'll just make a trip over there and say, maybe I'll spoil everybody. And... Do it, yeah. Jack. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. It just, uh, that, that just defeats the purpose of the game. But yeah, I, I I'm actually kind of excited about it because I I watched the first two episodes and the, well, the first one I'd like going okay because we were in a court yesterday. After the first episode right. aired, and I said, "Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait! We gotta because we both watch it late." And I said, "Wait!" I sent you a message saying, "Hey, wait a minute! There's there's a uh, there's no way the way they left it. We're gonna have to wait and record on Wednesday." Yep. So so it's it's Tuesday, Wednesday, and Sundays. No, it's uh, it's Sunday, Tuesday, and then Thursday. Thursday's the live, Thursday's when they do the live eviction. Oh, uh, Wednesday was just a special one because. Amazing Race was on, or probably don't spoil it. Still haven't watched it. Okay, I won't. I won't spoil it. But uh, yeah, so I, I'm I'm looking forward to this. It it should be fun. And like I said, you know a hell of a lot more about this than I do. But uh, I, I I'm I'm geared up. I'm ready. I'm ready. To, I'm ready to dig in for the summer and be here at least once a week to give our thoughts about what happened and all that other fun stuff. So let me ask you this then, uh, just to wind down. Knee jerk reaction: Who does Christy put up? Who are the two people that she puts up for eviction? I think obviously Cliff. Yep. Poor Cliff, and the other person. I'm gonna say she goes with Jessica. I'm gonna agree with you on Cliff, and I'm gonna go with Kemi as the other one. Ah, oh, yeah. Forget about Kemi. Uh, I'll stick with Jessica. You stick with Jessica. I'll stick with Jessica, just because I said it already. But I forget about Kemi. Yeah. Um, and who goes, if, so, if the, so you say it's Kimmy and, and Cliff, who goes home? Oh, Cliff. <laughs> you think Cliff, Cliff for sure? Cliff, between Kemi and Cliff, I say if Kemi can make friends with people in the house, Cliff goes home. But if, if Kemi stays the way that he is, I say they just vote her out. Well, know? Cliff is pretty outgoing, pretty friendly. He's, I, and I forget who commented on it. I think it was Annalise maybe said, uh, you know, I don't want Cliff to go home. Yeah, but I, th I thought it was Holly because she thought uh, a fa father figure. Fa yes. Okay. Right. Right. It was Holly. Yeah. So maybe she can save him. Yeah. But I, I can see that. And, and again, we could be wrong on both because there is going to be that power of veto challenge uh, where, where the chopping block can change. All right. 
I'm I'm just I I can't wait until well Sunday they nominate him right and then Tuesday they they vote him out right no uh, the, the evictions are usually on Thursday Thursday okay so we have different stuff happening between so they'll get nominated on Sunday right not, unless there's an I don't think there's an episode tomorrow no uh, I, I didn't think so because I thought next episode was Sunday so on Sunday we'll see who the nominations are. And we might even see who the um, who wins the power of veto. Okay. And then on Tuesday we'll probably see whatever the outcomes are that bring us to the final nominations. And then on Thursday we'll see any drama that's transpired <laughs> before, or during, or after that. And then again, Thursday is typically a live show. So we're going to see that live eviction happen, and then Julie sits down and talks to that person for a little bit. The house guests that you said they in the past house guests have left and come back. Are they able to just go home and they come back? Are they are they sequestered somewhere in a, like a hotel or something? Yeah, David at this point will be sequestered. Anybody else that probably, if we're going to bring these people back, these people are going to be sequestered, and then once that final challenge happens where somebody wins their way back in everybody else goes home and then what they do is similar to um survivor what they do is um anybody that makes it to jury goes to a jury house they're sequestered all together they don't go home okay and then they uh once a week they're caught up on what's been going on in the house okay to help them make that decision at the end there they're not watching the 24-hour life feed and stuff like that no, the way they the way they show it on TV is the person who gets voted out you know, shows up with a DVD of what's been going on in the house. Oh, okay. All Basically, right. like a rough edit, similar to what we see. Okay. All right. And then, uh, and then that's it. And then everybody votes on the end for who they want to pick as the winner. All right. I'm I'm sold. I'm I'm sold one hundred percent. It is a great show. I've been like I said, I've been hooked for about ten years at this point. Yeah, my mom, every time I go out there, she goes, do you watch Big Brother? I go, no, no. You ask me this every time. I go, no, I don't watch Big Brother. I go, but then I'll sit down and I'll watch it with her and, and her husband. I'll watch it. Watch it. I'll watch it. I go, what's going on here? Well, I'm one of those people. So what's going on here? Well, why do you do that? Why, why'd she do that? I'm one of those obnoxious people who do, doesn't watch the show, but I'll watch like, you know, I'll, I'll watch it when I'm out there. Then I come back and I don't, I don't even bother watching it again. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's. It's a lot of fun. Occasion, you know, again, like this season, they introduced you know the fact that Tommy and uh, Christy knew each other. That's a little bit of right. a twist. I saw when I was watching some clips that there was one year they had twins. Or you yeah. sent it to me. You sent it to me, where there was a clip where there's twins. I said that's pretty wild. That is that's one of my favorite twists where they had identical twins on the show, and what they basically did is they had one twin in the house, and then three days later they would switch her with her sister. And as I, the stipulation for the twins was as long as they can make it through, I think it was like day 30, let's say, uh, then they would introduce both twins into the game. Oh, okay. So if, if no one called them out saying, Hey, you're not, you're not such and such. They had to pull They had to, they had to fool the house. They had to fool the house and also not get voted out of the house. Yeah, that, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. But eventually, they you know the house in that season did figure it out. Spoilers alert! Spoiler alert! But um, it was still it was a lot of fun. It was a great twist, especially the the because um, one twin started developing a crush on one of the players. Oh, and the other twin had a crush on one of the other players. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably exactly what the producers wanted. And it happened. <laughs> <laughs> and so the other twin would come in, and she's not she's not showing any affection to that person. The uh, what I do wrong, what I do wrong, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. I think I think we've covered everything for this uh, this episode. Any, you know, is there I'm, anything else you want to add? I've got nothing. I'm looking forward to a, a long summer with you, Jack. Yeah, it should it should be fun. Absolutely. All right, guys. If you like this, like what we're doing, we have other shows on the network. We have we we talk about Survivor. We talk about Game of Thrones. All kinds of other things. My wife and I do our crazy life. We talk about grandparenting, parenting, and just everything else in between. You can subscribe to this, like it, and tell a friend. But that's all I got. I'm out.
Well, thank you for joining us. All right. Bye. Bye.